in this lesson we will count together yeah so from 20 uh, to 50 de 20 à 50 i hope you're ready because it's starting right now 20 21 okay so remember to make this little link 21 21 22 22 23 23 24 24 25 25 26 26 so remember it's ending with x but then we pronounce it 26 27 remember set it was this p disappear you don't pronounce it 27 28 so here you make the, the liaison 29 then here remember this e n en en 30 30 okay don't insist on the e it doesn't exist here 30 31 31 31 32 32 33 33 remember final s doesn't exist 33 34 34 34 remember in french the rule is that you, if you start with well if you get this combination q u r well you will pronounce it ka ka same thing for the other vowels okay so because that's the rule after q normally we put u and then an another vowel but then this u well basically it's not pronounced okay so ka quatre trente quatre trente cinq trente cinq trente six trente six trente sept trente sept trente huit trente huit 39 39 40 okay so same rule as previously as for 4 okay k 40 40 okay 41 41 42 42 43 43 44 44 45 45 46 46 47 47 48 48 49 49 50 50 same thing here okay remember that you've got this qu but then you don't pronounce the u and then you've got the nasal 1 50 50discover together le verbe venir venir means to come okay to come so it's quite useful and then you will have to use it uh, quite often in french so let's see how you conjugate this verb at the present form okay because this verb is not regular just wanted to tell you first okay so the first form is je viens je viens Okay, remember this i, 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 viens, viens, and then this nasal, final s not pronounced, je viens, tu viens, so it's the same form, okay, tu 
vient. Il, elle, vient. Final T, not pronounced. Il vient, elle vient. So, if we take one second just to have a look at the je, tu, il, elle forms, they are phonetically the same. Vient, vient, vient. Okay? You write the S, S, T, then you pronounce these forms the same way okay for nous it will be different because nous is here nous venons okay o n s classical ending for nous okay final s not pronounced so o n on venons venons nous venons nous venons okay and then vous venez remember a z combined like that a venez venez vous venez okay and then the last form so remember here it's quite interesting because we've got this a vowel here and then we've got a double n after okay and the rule in french is that when you get this a uh, and a double vowel after you will have to pronounce this a uh, like a eh, a eh. all right so v n v n Vienne, Vienne, okay? Il Vienne, elle Vienne. Il Vienne, elle Vienne. All right? E N T, you don't pronounce them. Il Vienne, elle Vienne. All right? So, je viens, tu viens, il vient, elle vient, nous venons, vous venez. Ils viennent, elles viennent. All right? And in this lesson, we'll discover the questions uh, in which you will find qui, que, or then quoi, okay? So let's discover now qui, okay? Qui means who, okay? So if you want to ask a question regarding someone, like in these two examples, so the first one, who is he? Qui est il, okay? So remember the formal, the normal way when we start a question with Key or then as we saw in the previous previous lessons, okay, you will have to change the order and to put your subject il he here after the verb. Qui est il? And then you make the liaison. Qui est-il? Who is he? Qui est-il? Qui est-il? Or then let's see a little example here. Qui vient? Vient is venir. Uh, vient is venir, yeah, is to come, sorry. <laughs> so, qui vient, who is coming, avec toi, with you, ce soir, this evening. Qui vient avec toi ce soir, who is coming with you this evening. Qui vient avec toi ce soir, okay? Um, if you pronounce them normally, Remember that you will have to raise your voice a little bit at the end of the question. So let's pronounce them the normal way. Qui est-il? Qui vient avec toi ce soir? Qui vient avec toi ce soir? Okay. Second one is que. So qui, who, que, what? What? Okay. And then we'll see two examples here. Que fais-tu? Okay, face coming from faire, faire means to do. Okay, que fais tu? So, what are you doing? What do you do? Okay, que fais tu? Same thing here, remember, que. So, you start a question with que, then you get to change the order. You get to put the subject after the verb. Okay, que fais tu? And it's a question, que fais tu? Que fais tu? Okay, and here, Que veux-tu? So, veux is coming from vouloir, vouloir, to want. Que veux-tu? What do you want? Okay, que veux-tu? Regarder, regarder is to watch. À la télévision. Well, at the television. Que veux-tu? 
regarder à la télévision. So let's read it normally now. Que veux-tu regarder à la télévision Que veux-tu regarder à la télévision Okay, so you can hear that I've been raising a little bit my voice at the end. And then the other option is quoi. So quoi means what as well. So you will tell me, oh, you get two what here. You get que and quoi. Yeah, for a good reason. Look at that. Well, tu fais quoi. So uh, I've been just taking the same question as we had here. This que fais-tu? What do you do? What are you doing? Okay, but then if you're using this quoi, then it does mean that you don't start the question with it. You just put it here, for example, at the end. Okay, tu fais quoi? It is exactly the same meaning as this question. Okay, but then you can see that you just keep the normal order of the sentence, subject, verb. Okay, in that case, you definitely need to raise your voice at the end. Okay, tu fais quoi? Tu fais quoi? And then I took the same example as we had here. Okay, tu veux regarder quoi à la télévision? Okay, so let's raise the voice at the end to make it clear that it's a question. Tu veux regarder quoi à la télévision? Tu veux regarder quoi à la télévision? Okay, so let's repeat. Qui, who, qui est-il? Qui vient avec toi ce soir? Que, what? But you start the question with it. Que fais-tu? Que veux-tu regarder à la télévision? And then quoi? You don't start the question and it means, it means what? Tu fais quoi? Tu veux regarder quoi à la télévision? In this lesson, we'll just focus on a short thing, but quite useful, les présentations. Okay, so the first thing, when you meet someone and you want to know the name of this person, well, that's the common question or the normal question that you will have to use. Comment, so how, vous, appelez-vous. Okay, we've been seeing uh, in unit one, if my memory is correct, the verb s'appeler, so to call oneself. Okay, when you introduce yourself, you use this uh, s'appeler verb. Okay, so that's the reason why it will look this way. Comment vous appelez-vous? Okay, so comment vous appelez-vous? So what's your name? How are you calling yourself? If you want a, a direct translation, but it's it sounds a bit strange in English, but then that's the question. Comment vous appelez-vous? All right. The other possibility that we've got is to keep the normal order. So vous vous appelez, and then we put this comment thing at the end of the question. Okay, so in that case, remember to raise your voice at the end. Vous vous appelez comment? Vous vous appelez comment? Okay, so it is exactly the same question. Okay, it is a bit less formal, this second option. Okay, because the first one is the classic option that we've got. We start with how and then we change the order, we put the subject after the verb, okay? But then it is, more, I mean, completely correct to, to, to ask a question like that. Vous vous appelez comment, okay? And then the other possibility would be, quel est votre nom? What is your, votre nom, name? What is your name? Quel est votre nom? Quel est votre nom? Raise a little bit. Quel est votre nom? Okay, so let's see them one more time. Comment vous appelez-vous? Vous vous appelez comment? Quel est votre nom? All right. Uh, in the first example, we've been using this vous form, so the polite form that normally we should use when we meet a person for the first time. Okay. But then let's uh, let's be frank that if you're young and uh, if you're meeting other uh, young persons, then you can use this uh, to form. Uh, so the less formal way. Okay. So the question will look like that. 
comment tu t'appelles comment tu t'appelles ok well then same option that we've got tu t'appelles comment so you put this comment at the end ok don't forget to raise your voice because it's a beautiful question here tu t'appelles comment tu t'appelles comment and then quel est ton nom what is your name quel est ton nom or other options so i've been putting this this option for this uh tu okay you the less formal one and not for for the vous because uh it is it is quite spoken this uh this this way c'est quoi ton nom well if you want to translate it directly it's what your name okay it looks really or it sounds really strange in english but still it's possible in french uh, it is it is not formal at all of course okay so uh don't use that uh, if it's quite important or if uh, the situation is quite formal okay c'est quoi ton nom c'est quoi ton nom okay and then if you want to well present yourself then remember we're using this appeler s'appeler okay to call oneself okay je m'appelle je m'appelle vincent lefrançois je m'appelle vincent lefrançois okay i call myself vincent lefrançois all right but then that's the the, the way we use to present ourselves okay other option would be to use not to use this s'appeler to call oneself but to use to be which is totally possible je suis vincent lefrançois je suis vincent lefrançois i am okay je suis vincent lefrançois and then third option mon nom my name okay mon nom est is mon nom est vincent lefrançois mon nom est Vincent Lefrançois. Okay, so let's see them one more time. Je m'appelle Vincent Lefrançois. Je suis Vincent Lefrançois. Mon nom est Vincent Lefrançois. We'll discover together well the plural form how to construct or how to make uh, a plural form so it's le pluriel en français so let's start now so we'll take this example okay basic example a friend un ami un ami okay un ami okay so here you can see that we've got this uh, article indéfini un right, the masculine form singular form and then we've got ami friend like that uh, at the singular form as well so if we want to construct the plural form well obviously the article will change okay uh, we saw previously that uh, the plural article was de in that case and then we keep the same word so ami and the rule goes like that you get to add at the end of the word s okay in that case and as in most of the cases you won't pronounce it but you will have to put it okay and so you've got des amis okay and if you make the the liaison so the link between the two you will get des amis okay des amis so ami remember doesn't change even if you get to write the s then you don't pronounce it okay and now let's see a few examples so this one une femme une femme okay so if we think about the rule that we saw previously then une is changing and then the article become de okay femme you write it like it was at the singular form and then you just add this s at the end and as we said you don't pronounce it so you get de femme okay des femmes so une femme singular and then des femmes right and then un homme if we make this little link between the two un homme un homme un homme and then we'll put 
this word at the plural form. So same thing here. So this uh, article indefini un is becoming de in that case. And then you rewrite the word homme. And after that, you just put the S at the end. You don't pronounce it. So you get des hommes, des hommes, des hommes. Okay. Un homme, singular form, des hommes, plural form. Okay. And then I took, uh, well, this example with this article défini, le, okay, so the, the, le livre, le livre, okay, if you want to put the plural form, then the article here becomes les, so that's the plural form, okay, les, and then same rule, you just write livre, and then you put S at the end, but then you don't pronounce it, les livres. Le livre, les livres. So it's quite interesting uh, in this example here, because if you listen carefully, le livre, les livres. So the only way to know whether it's singular or plural is to pronounce correctly the article, in that case, le, and here, les. So it's really this le, e, uh, and then les, e. Eh. That will make the difference between the singular form and the plural form. Okay. As usual in French, we've got exceptions. So you get words uh, that will end with this e, a, u combination of vowels, like for instance, un, o. So remember when you get these, these vowels like that, then you get only the sound o. Okay, une O. So in that case, well, you won't add the S as uh, like we saw previously, but then it will be the rule is that you get to put X here at the end, but then same rule, you don't pronounce it. Des O. Okay, une O, des O. All right, second group, words ending with A. U. Here is an example, un tuyau, okay, same rule here, you won't add S at the end, but instead of S you will put X, okay, des tuyaux, same rule, you don't pronounce it, des tuyaux, okay, un tuyau, des tuyaux, so the only difference will be with the article because the word will be pronounced the same way. And then the last group is uh, the words ending with e, u, e. So let's take one example. Un feu, un feu. And basically the same, same rule. You don't put s, but you will put x instead, and then you don't pronounce it. Des feux. Un feu, des Okay, there is another group of words. So, because normally uh, the words ending with the uh, O U, like that here, O U, and then uh, the sound is U, okay. Normally, these words just behave like the others, so uh, you just need to put S at the end. But of course, as usual in French, we've got few exceptions. So, I've been listing all the exceptions of the ou ending you know, words that will, well, like we saw previously, not take uh, S, but then take X at the end, okay? But still, as usual, it's not pronounced, so it doesn't really affect the pronunciation, but it's just for you if you want to write them correctly at the plural form. Remember, it's not S, but it's X, okay? So the first one, un B. Okay, so I did put the translation here. Pluriel, des bijoux. Okay, then, un caillou, un caillou, plural, des cailloux. Okay, remember, you don't pronounce it, the, the, the final X. Then, un chou, okay, remember, when you combine this C and H, you get the sound sh, 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 chou. Un chou, pluriel, des choux. Okay. 
un genou, un genou, des genoux, un hibou, un hibou, des hibou, des hibou, un joujou, un joujou, des joujou, des joujou, un pou, un pou, des pou, des pou. Okay, so the good thing, if you remember carefully what uh, I've been introducing so far, is that the main main group of uh, words are actually you, you only need to add s at the end and then you well basically you don't pronounce the the, the the s or then the exceptions you will like these ones here you will have to add this x at the end but still you won't pronounce uh the the, the x okay um but still as usual we've got exceptions so a uh, few exceptions not that much but then uh, these exceptions are really, really strange because it does mean that the pronunciation will change. Okay, so we'll take this one, un boeuf, un boeuf, and then at the plural, well, you just write it like we saw previously, so you just add this S, but then pronunciation changes quite much because you get des boeufs. Des bœufs, all right. Un bœuf, des bœufs, all right. Then un œuf, un œuf, des œufs. Okay, and we'll make the, the liaison here to make it sound more beautiful. Des œufs, des œufs, all right. Un œuf, des œufs. And then the last one, this is probably the, 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 the most strange one. Un oeil, un oeil, un oeil, des yeux, des yeux, des yeux, 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 okay? Don't pronounce the final X as usual. Yeux, yeux, des yeux, all right? Cover together le verbe pouvoir pouvoir means uh, to can okay so it's quite useful and then we'll discover it because uh, well it's not a regular verb so it's uh, it's always quite uh, quite interesting to take a few minutes to really work on it and uh, try to uh, remember the way it is conjugated at the present form okay so the first form that we'll have is je as usual so je peux okay Final X not pronounced here, okay? So you've got X, but you don't pronounce it. So basically you get the sound peu, peu, je peu, okay? So I can, je peu, okay? Then tu, tu peu, same pronunciation and same same uh, spelling or writing, okay? P-E-U-X, okay? You don't pronounce the final X. Tu peu, okay? Je peu, tu then il elle peu so you will put t at the end you don't pronounce it il peu elle peu okay so if you look carefully you've got peu here you've got peu here and you get peu here okay so for the three first or four because uh, there is the feminine form as well for the four four first persons here well it's the same phonetical form it's Okay, and then nous. So, a classic ending for nous, this uh, ONS ending for nous. Okay, nous pouvons, nous pouvons. Okay, you don't pronounce the, the final S. Nous pouvons. Mm -hmm. Then vous, 
pouvez, ok, classic ending as well for the vous form, a z like that, ok, remember you pronounce it a, a, ok, vous pouvez, vous pouvez, and then plural form, il, elle, peuvent, il, elle, peuvent, ok, so uh, be, be careful because uh, as you can see, you've got this e, u here, e, u here, e, u here, and then it's coming back here as well, okay? So the only OU, OU, that does connect to the infinitive here. Pouvoir, it's only for nous and vous, okay? So let's read them one more time. Je peux, tu peux, il peut, elle peut, nous pouvons, vous pouvez, ils peuvent, elles peuvent, okay? As usual, as usual, this ending, this a and T ending, you write it, you don't pronounce it, okay? Pov, 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 okay? So it's really useful. Uh, you should really, I mean, definitely know it by heart, okay? So try your best. Uh, well, watch again this video if you need it, and then uh, I hope it will enter in your head quite easily, okay? Uh, let's see some example now. Je peux chanter, okay? Je peux chanter. So you can see that in that case, when you construct a verb, or sorry, you construct a, a sentence with a, the verb pouvoir, here you've got a second verb, chanter, and it means to sing, okay? So I can sing. Uh, well, you should all the time put the second verb at the infinitive form, okay? So when we talk about infinitive form, normally it's the basic form of the verb, okay? Uh, je peux chanter. Another example, tu peux partir. Partir is to leave. You can leave. Tu peux partir, all right? Same thing here, okay? Second verb, it's, well, basically coming right after, of course, and then at the infinitive form, all right? Elle peut dessiner. Dessiner is to draw. Elle peut dessiner. She can draw. Okay. Elle peut dessiner. <laughs>